I'm Pearl Mutiba reporting from Bramfontein, Johannesburg and NTV News. Now the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a steer in South Africa economy, particularly those feeling the pinch are those residing in informal settlements. Now the Department of Housing are coming up with new ways that they could assist individuals residing in informal settlements so that they are well catered for during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the particular individuals that we are here for are the residents currently staying um, uh, in Deep Slot. We'll be interviewing the MMC of housing de uh, development, Malungi Simabasu, who will explain to us exactly what measures have been put into place to assist residents staying in informal settlements in Deep Slot. Mr. Malungi Simabasu, so thank you very much uh, for joining us on um, NNTV News. The first question that I would like to find out is, um, can you tell us about the current housing projects that are taking place in Deep Slot? Okay, uh, no, thank you very much, and greetings to the viewers as well. Uh, I'm MMC, not MEC. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what MEC may let you say. <laughs> you have taken my position now. No, uh, no. Uh, what happened in Deep Sloot, we, we went there to, to hand over the site to contractors for the construction of um, temporary relocation units. Um, basically, what you are trying to address there. We are trying to address the issue of congestion uh, in the informal settlements that are around uh, Deep Sloot uh, for the purposes of COVID. Uh, so we are responding to, to COVID um, and we want at least to, to de-densify um, our informal settlements there because they are high dense populated and they are congested. So that's what we are, we are trying to address uh, with that project uh, that we, we launched uh, last week. And the next uh, question is, how do residents qualify to, to have such houses that you, you currently are busy with, with the current project that did do it? Well, our allocations unit are, are working with the ward councillors and other stakeholders in the area to identify beneficiaries. Um, because we, we said we, we, we don't want the situation where we pick people from from um, uh, from pieces within the, the informal settlement because it won't make much impact. But what we are trying to do here, we are trying to open up spaces within the informal settlement so that we are we redesign even the informal settlement itself. So our allocations unit are working um, with the ward councillors and, and other various uh, stakeholders in the ward, but also the, the director uh, responsible uh, for this particular program. Uh, so that when we move people, at least we have enough space to to realign our 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 shakes within the informal settlement. So 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 they, once they are done, then they will submit that report to us to say these are people that have been identified as beneficiaries, but they are currently working on that as we speak. Okay, perfect. Can you tell us more about the the Riverside View flats and what is the criteria used to allocate residence houses um, and uh, um, to know that, and also how do we know that uh, the people that, because you find that in Riverside, the individual owns a house in that specific flat, and at the same time, they also still own an RDP uh, house in Deep Slot. How is that so, and how do you deal with those cases? So let's say I'm a resident, for example, who stays at Deep Slot, and I manage to, to secure property, to secure a flat in Riverside, but at the same time, I also have um, an RDP house in 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 in, in group slot because we had had similar cases like that. How does that happen, and how do you how do you then um, 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 ensure that you don't have uh, continuous uh, cases similar to that, so that an individual doesn't have doesn't occupy two properties all in one? Since you did mention that there's a issue of COVID nineteen that you're trying to move place, you, you're trying to ensure that people have enough places to 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 stay in. No, I think what should happen um, uh, on that case is that if there is anyone with information like that, uh, I think must assist us uh, so that we open for investigation. Um, because um, when when your subsidy has been approved and you have been allocated, um, the system will kick you out automatically, so you can't be allocated twice. At least, unless there was an element of corruption in between, uh, of which is something that we need to investigate. So if there is a case like that, uh, I think um, whoever that has got information must come forward and then we'll um, uh, immediately refer the matter to our group forensic investigation for, for them to get to the bottom. 
uh, of that because uh, one thing that I know is that Riverside as a project uh, was meant actually to address the issue of, of deep sludge and most of the beneficiaries that are there um, uh, are being sourced uh, from from deep sludge informal settlements. So, but you, I'm not aware of the case where uh, a person that was allocated in Riverside is the same as person that uh, actually benefited in deep sludge. But it's something that we need to investigate and 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 for us to do that, we will need information and people that got information must come forward uh, with the information so that we take it further. Okay. Um, just just to to follow up on that on on that answer, what happens? to those, uh, if, if, if an individual has moved from an RTP housing into to Riverside uh, flat, what happens to that property, the RTP house? Who is that house then allocated to? Does it just remain open? Or is it then given to an individual that has been waiting for, 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 for that house for a specific number of, of years? Now remember, when you get to allocated to a, an RTP house, it's your house, mm -hmm. uh, because you get title it uh, that uh, confirms the, the, the ownership. So if you move out of the house, then you will decide uh, on, on uh, who should remain behind because it's your house. So once we have allocated you, once we have uh, provided you with the title deeds, then we, we no longer get involved because it's your house. So, but, but if there are people that um, they move out of RTP houses and then go and occupy um, uh, other flats in, in Riverside, then it's something that we need to investigate because you can't benefit twice. The system will automatically kick you out, even if it's outside housing, you know, because they've got one centralized uh, housing waiting list and, 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 the, and the subsidy, once it approved, then the system will tell you once you've punched in the ID number to, to say, no, but this particular applicant has got an approved subsidy and it will even tell you the, the, the address of the RTP houses that you had, you had, you had been allocated, and so, so, so it doesn't happen unless there is a, a corruption uh, involved in the process. So, so, so if if you are allocated, you are given a title deed. So we don't decide who should be the next person to be allocated because it's your house, and 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 and, and the subsidy was approved on your name. So we don't get involved in that. Okay, looking at uh, Dipslot, the population has, it continues to grow. Uh, and look at, at uh, currently we're looking at the COVID-19 um, pandemic. And let's look at your project uh, at Riverside, uh, the specific project that you're building and the current flats that you have that already are available for people that already moved in. In terms of the individual that are still occupying your informal settlements, you know, how, how what, what um, if I can just put it correctly, um, in terms of emergency, because I just feel like it's, it's, it is like a, a crisis, an emergency issue that we should move those people from those informal settlements into uh, the, 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 the houses that you perhaps are building and hoping to, 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 to allow them to occupy. How soon does one have to, to, to wait? You know, what is the, like, the waiting period for a person to move from, 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 from the informal settlement or that RTP house to Riverside? You know, is there a time period? Because I'm just thinking now, looking at the, 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 the COVID-19 pandemic that we, we are currently facing, with has um, have, have you, the department given themselves like a specific time period on moving people so that it is not too congested as it is at the moment? No, uh, currently at uh, Riverside, we don't have uh, units ready for allocation. Uh, hence, we decided to uh, build the uh, temporary um, uh, structures, mm -hmm. and, and 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 on that project we gave contractors a period of three months uh, uh, to complete uh, the construction of those temporary units. Uh, uh, after we have launched the project, because um, the purpose of of that uh, event that we had was actually to hand over the site to contractors to say you can now start. Uh, so, but since th that day, uh, we are counting uh, since that day to say, we gave you um, the site on this date, so we are expecting you to complete this project at the specific uh, period. So we gave them three months uh, to complete the project and hoping that there will be no disruption and interruption. And after three months, we'll be able to hand out the keys to beneficiaries. Um, and then, what is going to happen to to to? Because remember, when you uh, at Dipslot, there's different citizens. It's not only like South Africans. There's different different individuals coming from different 
countries, what is going to happen to people who are not um, South African citizens who reside in Deep Slot? Because remember, they are also um, are affected by the COVID pandemic. Does the department isolate them, or is there is there a, a, um, maybe a, a, a plan or, or a project that is specifically um, 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 for for individuals that are not specific SA um, citizens? No, um, uh, Home Affairs will give us guidance. Um, we did have a meeting with Home Affairs uh, when we were um, still planning for this particular program because we are quite aware that in most of our informal segments there are foreign nations. So, so Home Affairs is going to give us guidance on that one because one thing that you should know is that um, the foreign nationals are not allowed to, to own uh, especially where um, the RTP houses giveaways are concerned. So, but we can't we can't really say much uh, on that one because we also get guidance uh, from Home Affairs. So they said once we are ready, uh, then we must also invite them so that they 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 you know they take over the process. Uh, because even when we are going to allocate, we we firstly send the list to them now so that they verify the list, check the ID if they are valid and all those things. So so we are working with them and we are working with them very well. Um, they, are, they are supporting us and they are assisting us and they, are, they do provide the information that we require um, at the time. So so they are also going to give us guidance as to how we are going to deal with that because they said they said the foreign national, you know, they are, they are, they are you know they are in different categories. You know they 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 did some presentation here where they are telling us about the salam seekers. Where they are t they were telling us a neutralized uh, citizens. Where they were telling us about illegal. So 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 there are different categories. You know and and they are better placed to deal with those uh, because I'm from where I'm sitting. Uh, you know I don't understand much. Uh, but they do uh, because they deal uh, with those issues on daily basis. So they will give us a guidance and we will follow through uh, on what they, then they have uh, provided to us. Okay. Now, uh, Dipsford Station 1 has been there for over 25 years. What is the city plan? What are, what are some of the city plan around that particular area? You know, not not extension one uh, specific, uh, but you know, in, in the very same land uh, where we are going to put in tier two uh that land uh, has been earmarked for development for quite some time by the province, um, and we said we are going to start with the actual development there, but we are still engaging with the province because it's their land. Uh, we said if maybe we could sign maybe a tripartite alliance, um, an agreement. Uh, ourselves, province and, and national um, uh, for the development of that particular area. So we can provide for 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 the installation of services, you know, through our our, our USDG. Uh, province then can and, and inject HSDG, which is for top structure, then so that the, the development can can commence. So so we are in we are in or we are on those uh, uh, discussions. At the moment, with the province, because it's 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 not only extension one, but the greater uh, deep slot at large. Uh, there is a development that is needed uh, to deal with with the with the with the informality uh, of the township now, because now deep slot is moving from being a, a formal township into an informal township, and we need to address that. And 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 developing Tanganani. Um, will be part of addressing uh, the very same issue because Riverside alone cannot uh, cater uh, for the greater dispute, but you need other developments in and around the region so that at least you are able to source out beneficiaries out of that congested uh, deep slot and, and, and leave deep slot as a formal uh, township like it was before. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just in closing, like, what is the vision of, 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 of uh, the department when it comes to deep slot? And I say the vision, like how does the how 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 does the department see Dipslut uh, transforming into? And also when 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 asked that, I'm looking at the issue of um, the current the current uh, area, how it looks like. How do you visualize it? Maybe in, in in the next coming years. And also in terms of fairness, when it comes to allocation of houses, what are some of the measures have you currently put in place to ensure that there's a proper uh, fairness and also smooth um, transition of an individual moving from informal settlement and into into that house. Well, uh, like Jeff, 
um, like I've just indicated earlier, uh, to say we Dislut is a formal township, um, and it's now slowly beginning to be an informal uh, uh, settlement. So we want to take it back to how it was before um, and, and leave it like that. It is a formal uh, township. So, so that's why we, are, we want to have other developments so that we deal with the congestion. Um, but on the allocation, um, you know, one thing that we said is that we were not going to, to allow um, uh, queue jumping. Uh, so if, if you have applied in 2010, you must wait. We'll deal with the 96, 97, we'll deal with 98, we'll deal with 99. So that's how we're going to do it. And hence, we, we have mandated our, our, our allocations unit to work closely with uh, all, all, all affected stakeholders on the ground and road councillors so that we eliminate um, uh, this queue jumping uh, thing that has been happening in the past. And that's how we're going to do that. Because now um, we were hoping that by this time, as the city of Johannesburg would have uh, made our list public, but you know, we need the permission from the national government and we are still waiting for them to give us a go ahead and a green light to publicize our list. But um, uh, while that has not been uh, happening on our side, uh, we need to make sure that at least we make our process very transparent so that everyone is aware of how the allocation is unfolding and, and how the process is taking place. Mm -hmm. Can I just want to jump in just one last question? Um, we are in the new democracy, and just to ask you directly that when when you visit, uh, I'm assuming that you have been to Dubslot before. Um, do you do you do you feel that it is taking a little bit too long, just to ensure that people have? I mean, obviously you can't assist everybody within a specific whether you're in Alexander or you're in another informal settlement. Do you feel like sometimes it takes a little bit long just to ensure that people have basic proper housing? And how can we then speed up the process? What other organizations can actually come into play that can actually assist the department just to, to stretch and see if maybe you are, or if you are busy with, with a specific area, like a, a specific land that is based for extension one, then another organization can maybe perhaps assist you um, with another piece of land where, it, where we can just try and speed up the process so that people are not left staying in informal settlement, especially during this period, which is winter? No, we, we, we usually call, you know, private um, developers to assist us, you know, whenever they do AMA, AMA developments in their privately owned land, uh, to also give us a portion for RTP giveaway houses or low-cost rentals. You know, but but sometimes, you know, um, it's us in within the community, you know, who who causes uh, challenges, uh, I would not say problems, challenges. Because sometimes, uh, like, you know, you you will move people out of, uh, of, 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 of the informal settlements, allocate them, uh, hoping that uh, you will have spaces, you know, for, for the upgrade of the informal settlement, only to find that two weeks down the line, uh, the very same spaces have been occupied by the relatives of the very same people that you have taken to 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 it's either a new development or you have relocated them you know others you know they invite people because they want to sell these stands um, they rent out these uh, shakes um, uh, that are there you know others they even uh, sell electricity you know they illegally connect and sell electricity you know and 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 it's something that we always um, ask for, um, on our people whenever we've got public meeting to say people need to work with us you know people need to work with government you know so that when government provides services our, we must look um, after those services ourselves and we must make sure that at least there's no one comes from 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 far away from where we are and and to come and and, and cause uh, havoc or chaos you know by by putting in uh, structures you know we nearly in, in in all open space within our within our, our our informal settlement you know because what what governments needs to upgrade the informal settlement is spaces you know so that when you realign the informal settlement uh, when you put in access roads when you put in services at least there is an access you know to the informal settlement so if ourselves within the community we allow people to put in structures even in open spaces open spaces that can be utilized you know when we are upgrading informal settlements we are making it a very difficult for government you know to actually assist you know in that regard
No, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Interviewed the MMC of uh, City of Johannesburg based on housing, the current housing projects that's taking place at Dupes Lord. Uh, the MMC did uh, inform us that the project will perhaps be completed in the next three months. Proper measures and also um, um, criteria have been put in place to ensure fairness, specifically fairness for individuals that are currently residing at Dupes Lord. Um, he also did mention that uh, um, um, uh, individuals will be chosen according to how long long have you registered to occupy housing? He also mentioned that uh, the department is, is treating the issue of housing and also safety for the resident in Dipslop as an emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The MMC also um, um, did mention that uh, since the development of, of, of Dipslop, they have placed it as a top priority to ensure that um, individuals will be selected properly and with speedily time to ensure that uh, uh, people have houses at the end. This is Paul Mutiba, NNTV News, Bramfontein.